Hello and welcome to the Transmart Foundation uh, training class, uh, Transmart Platform Basics for New Users. Uh, we're delighted to have Elena Fedorovich from the Rancho Bioscience to present this class today. Um, first, I will go through a couple of things quickly uh, and then I will turn it over to Elena. Um, thank you for, for joining. Um, we offer uh, training classes uh, every month, uh, the last Monday of every month. And we have a, a program of a, a number of classes this year uh, that we're conducting um, listed on this chart. Um, every class is recorded. And so hopefully if things go well technically by the end of the day, the recording and the PowerPoint presentations will be loaded on our website for you to review, share with colleagues, uh, whatever. And um, these classes are offered for free. Uh, and um, thanks to uh, Transmart members, Rancho Bioscience, Thompson Reuters, and The Hive uh, for contributing the time of their people to uh, present these classes. I'm going to just start with a couple of quick questions. Uh, it's always good for the trainer and for us to know, you know, who um, who's attending and, and sort of, you know, what you know already about the, the platform. So I put up a quick poll up on your screen. You should be able to select an answer. But the question is, have you, answered, have you used uh, the Transmart platform before? Uh, or maybe you've never heard of it. Uh, someone has suggested that you attend. <clears throat> and uh, as uh, as it's been all year, it's most of you, 70% are new, not really know about the platform pre previously, uh, which is great. This is really the goal of these classes is to get, you know, new people, you know, knowing about the platform and, um, you know, learning about using it. My last question is just quickly, you know, how we use the platform. Um, are you using it as part of your research in the company or in an academic research program? Are you using, are you supporting other users either in your company or maybe from a vendor? And again, you know, generally, um, you know, we've had quite a mix here. Um, today, it looks like we've got um, uh, half using it for research and half supporting other users. So that's, that's great again. Okay. So I think that's uh, that's all I need to cover right now. Uh, again, this is being recorded. We will have this online uh, later today, uh, hopefully. And um, but with that, I would be happy to turn it over to Elena, who will uh, present the class. Elena, I will make you the presenter. Okay. Um, by the way, if you have questions, um, you can raise your hand. Uh, on the dashboard, you can just type the question in. I will monitor it, monitor it all the whole class, um, and uh, let us know. And we'll uh, try to get your questions answered as quickly as we can. Uh, otherwise, there'll be uh, time at the very end to answer questions. So, with that, I'll turn it over to Elena. Okay. Okay, uh, let's start. Welcome everyone. My name is Elena Fedorovich. I'm from Rancho Biosciences, as Rudy has already said. And Rancho Biosciences is a company that offers Transmart services, and that's how we are involved here. Today we will explore Transmart basics to make new users familiar with what it is and why it's good to use it. So the objectives of today's class will be to give you the background information about Transmart, uh, explain user interface sections, including how to browse and search for studies already loaded into Transmart, and then we'll do a demo showing how to define cohorts to examine, depending on what you want to study or explore, how to view summary statistics for commonly tested calculations, and exploring data sets with some basic plots and statistical tests. We also learn how to export data sets to analyze them outside Transmart and how to use some advanced workflows. Transmart is an open source community driven data management system for translational medicine. The initial version of Transmart was developed in 2009 by Johnson & Johnson and Recombinant Data Corporation. In February 2012, the Transmart platform version 1 was released under the GPL license by Johnson & Johnson. The Transmart Foundation was established in 2013 as a public-private partnership uh, as a result of collaborations between scientists in the United States and the European Union. Uh, since then, uh, Transmart Foundation supports Transmart. 
You can see recordings, news, slide decks, and all the other information on the Transmart website. That uh, the link you can see below on the slide. Uh, the uh, platform does not belong to foundation, but foundation facilitates platforms development and brings community together. Uh, the version 1.2 of Transmart platform is a broad community effort, and it was released in August 2014. Uh, on this slide, you see uh, all the contributors to that platform, including pharmaceutical companies, university hospitals, different organizations, and technology vendors. This is the version that we're going to explore today, and the one that you can use after class to practice using available for public thanks to support on Transmart Foundation, Transmart Instances. Uh, Transmart is a data warehouse with data analysis and data exploration functions, assessed through a web interface that brings different type of data such as patient's disease, um, uh, history of treatment information, clinical data, molecular data together. Integrated in one platform, linked clinical and omics data work together. So here you can see that there are so many types of um, molecular data can be loaded into Transmart. It's a metabolome, proteome data, miRNA, epigenome, like methylation, transcriptome, SNP copy number variants, and whole genome sequencing. So. Um, all this information is now can be loaded into Transmart and then analyzed together with the uh, laboratory tests, uh, sleep patterns of the patients, blood pressure, anything uh, from the clinical side and the medical history. Elena, Elena this is Rudy. Um, could you um, close the dashboard up in the top there, the, the orange button? It's, oh, I, for some reason, that's showing here, yeah. The orange oh, arrow. Oh, okay. Can you see that? How do I close it? Oh, the orange arrow on the oh, side there. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you should close Yes, that's it. good. Yeah, I just I just noticed it. Okay, no problem. That's, that's better. Okay. So, uh, because Transmart integrates all this data together, uh, it allows us to use Transmart to store data, uh, to use it as a data repository or library, to analyze data, for target validation, by market discovery, toxicity, and so on. And we can form hypotheses and test them on Transmart. So Transmart helps different collaborating groups or groups from different disciplines to communicate, share and analyze their results to facilitate their research. It also allows to combine private data with public data. Uh, you can see uh, on that slide different groups that can communicate and uh, collaborate together in the Transmart. So, um, Transmart is written in Java Groovy and other languages using either Oracle or Postgres as a back in database. Uh, it's not something that never changing. Transmart is being constantly improved its functions can be adjusted for researchers' needs, and new features can be added using our interface. Uh, the computational organization of the platform is a web or client server. Uh, as you can see here on the top of the picture, um, it has a web interface where the users um, can look at the data and analyze it using the uh, uh, back in database, as I said, uh, supported by Oracle or Postgres, which is called the uh, Transmart Data Mart here in the middle. It stores the data and um, makes it be able to be used. Before loading the data uh, to Transmart, it has to be curated. And um, the clinical data is a low dimensional data. It, it has to be properly formatted and standardized applying ontologies, taxonomies, vocabularies, syntactical standards before loading to Transmart uh, to be uniform, because different um, researchers may use different terms for what they are looking for. And uh, here in the Transmart, we have to, to have everything standardized to be able to combine uh, different types of data together. 
the biomarker data the biomarker data are the high dimensional data and before logging to transmart they also have to be formatted usually uh, the groups uh, has to uh, have to agree on design of how the data would be organized in the transmart for the best results and it will be their decision how they are loading the data into transmart so to integrate data in, in the platform, a good collaboration between scientists, clinicians, developers, service providers, and ETL engineers is crucial. So here you see the link to Transmart Foundation uh, webpage, where you can find additional training materials. And uh, clicking on the tab researchers, you'll, you'll find the uh, training and tutorials there. Um, Transmart bibliography, created data sets, uh, and uh, use cases on Wiki. So you can always go there and um, uh, learn something more. There are two public instances also available on Transmart Foundation website where you can uh, do your own trainings and tests practicing with Transmart. Here you see these two links. And uh, you can use admin admin uh, uh, for both of them to log in, or for the second one, which is called public ethics, uh, you can use also guest and uh, transmark 2015 as a password to log in. Um, it's recommended to use Chrome or Mozilla browsers for the best performance of Transmart. Uh, the, the landing page available after providing login credential for the server is the Browse tab of the Transmart web interface. Here we are in the Browse tab. And uh, its main components are a text search field, uh, a filtering field, program explorer field, and a tab selection bar right there. The primary purpose of the Browse tab is to facilitate the selection of the appropriate study from the library of studies loaded on the server, right there. The Program Explorer allows the browsing of study metadata and the export of arbitrary files associated with the target study of interest. Uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, uh, we're going to go through the active filters now and um, going to look at the metadata in the Program Explorer while we're going to uh, explore the tab selection bar in our demo when we'll start it in a minute. So uh, these folders here are called uh, programs, and they're browse programs. Uh, you can see the uh, major three ones loaded at the moment into Transmart. And um, if we click, for example, on the public studies, Then the um, three of the studies will appear below that, and these are all public studies uploaded to Transmart from mostly from the um, geo repository. And if you click on one of these um, nodes, we call them nodes here, not folders, with your left click, then on the right side of the screen, the metadata shows up. So um, if tells us briefly about the um, subjects of the study and the uh, purpose of the study. Uh, below the metadata, uh, you can find the information about publication of this data, which organism was used, how many samples or subjects were used for the study, uh, the information about the authors and the publication title here, which is uh, very useful to start with. Um, exploring the study of your interest. Uh, queries and filters are used to refine the selected data to just the studies of interest. And um, we can use the uh, select, uh, we, we can start our search with um, select, selecting a category within the all. If you uh, click on the arrow before, below the all, uh, shows up the list of the available categories such as genes, diseases, um, anything. And you can choose from there, and then you type a search keyword in the box nearby. 
After that, you click filter, and as I show you on the next slide, if I choose the disease in the all and uh, type asthma, click filter, it immediately shows up in the um, box below, and then you see the studies highlighted that contain this keyword asthma. So we have two asthma studies here, and these two studies also um, deal with um, asthma somewhere in their content. So the uh, um, other tabs of the selection bar uh, have such functions as analyze is used to view study data for subjects that you select based on criteria that you specify. It compares data generated for subjects in two different cohorts based on criteria and points of comparison that you specify. Sample Explorer is a search for data sets of tested tissue and blood samples within categories such as tissue type, pathology, and test type, uh, such as gene expression or SNP. Uh, gene signature lists that we're going to look at closer later uh, is used to view definitions of existing gene signatures and add new gene signatures for your analysis. GVAS is a plugin to view genome-wide association study data. Uh, it is used to view gene genetic variants in individuals to find those that may be associated with a trait of interest such as a major disease. Um, GVAS is not available in all Transmart instances, but uh, in a new, newly released Transmart version 16.2 that was released uh, just a month ago, uh, GVAS is 100% um, available for the analysis. Admin perform administrative tasks, such as creating Transmart user accounts. Um, usually users do not use admin function. And utilities uh, contain submenus providing supplementary information for actions. And now we are moving to demo. And I wanted to ask you if you have any questions at this point. So, um, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see any questions. No. Okay, so then we'll move ahead and we'll proceed with demo. Before we proceed with demo, um, I prepared the um, hypothesis uh, based demo today. So we're going to look at two studies, uh, two data sets from um, publicly available uh, repository GEO to illustrate a few of Transmart workflows. And one study is on asthma and the other one is on rheumatoid arthritis. Our goal will be to learn how to reproduce and visualize the published findings quickly using Transmart. And the good thing about the study on asthma is that the authors didn't publish in their paper any plots or pictures representing their results. They just show us the tables with their conclusions. And Transmart lets us to make it more visual in plots. And we're going to use their uh, raw data and explore their findings. We also want to find interesting associations between genes expression and clinical data. And we're going to uh, uh, try to support the hypothesis that will generate and will test it using Transmart advanced workflows. If we'll have time, we'll go through additional workflows demonstration. So uh, the asthma paper deals with the um, um, Three groups of people, uh, they have healthy control and two asthma uh, patients uh, with severe and non-severe asthma. The authors of the paper reported the significant activation of circulating CD8 plus T cells, but not CD4 plus T cells in patients with severe asthma. They didn't found significant uh, changes in mRNA expression uh, in both T cells obtained from patients with non severe asthma. The paper uh, on rheumatoid arthritis um, is um, uh, so the authors of this paper um, 
we are looking for the biomarkers that will identify uh, the responders for treatment uh, versus non-responders responders for treatment of severe asthma. Later, I will um, formulate the hypothesis uh, why we're going to combine these two studies together. And now I'm going to the Transmart for demo. Uh, let me move this out. Okay, so this is a uh, private Transmart instance. Is not one that I showed the link to which I showed you before. But um, the good thing about these two studies that I chose, they are also available on the uh, public Transmart instances. And after class, you can always go back and try to repeat what I uh, showed you here today on, on those uh, Transmart instances. So now I'm going to go into the tab Analyze. Uh, do you see the screen well? Is it, is it good or I have to zoom in? I better zoom in a bit. I think it, uh, it looks pretty good. You can maybe zoom a little bit. Yeah, that, that's better. Okay, because uh, we need to see what we're going to do here. So um, this is our first study here in this um, program three, asthma, that I was talking about. And opening the main study note, we we'll see the uh, study three. The organization of the nodes here is pretty standard for Transmart. Uh, it has biomarker data, clinical data, and subjects. Also, it has additional node samples and time points here. Uh, opening each node, we'll see what it has inside. So the biomarker data has the folder with the platform a name. Uh, which is used uh, for the gene expression in this study. And uh, the expression was um, done in blood of the patients. The clinical data node here in this study contains spirometry tests. Under the spirometry test, you'll find two major lung function tests, the FEV1, which is forced expiratory volume, exhaled in the first second started from the total lung capacity level and FVC, uh, the fourth expiratory vital capacity. And um, subjects contain the demographics. This is the uh, sex of uh, the cohorts of uh, used for the study. Uh, you can see here females and males and their age. Also, it has medical history that um, shows the three studied groups, uh, their healthy controls, non-severe asthma and severe asthma, as I said before. And we can find also the information for the treatment right there. So as you can see, um, out of um, asthma patients, some of them had, uh, so, only, uh, only few, uh, they had different treatments and this uh, information mostly will, um, can be used as um, just for information on the treatment or if you will find the way how to analyze it in Transmart, you can also use it all this for analysis, but it's, it's pretty different for different patients, so it will be hard to analyze. So now we um, have to uh, create uh, subsets for an analysis and uh, this is the field where you choose what you're going to analyze. So to start with, I will choose two subsets. So first of all, we also have samples and time points and cell types here in this study, ICD-40 cells and CD8 T cells. So I will choose CD8 cells and drag them in subset one as well as will, uh, I will drag them in subset two. We're going to look at uh, CD8 T cells groups uh, of different patients. So then I will choose the healthy 
control as a subset one, and all the severe patients I will put in subset two. So now we have two groups which we're going to analyze further. So we're going to summary statistics first. And summary statistics uh, field lets us to do the basics statistics on the uh, subsets that we chose. So here you can see the histogram of age that shows the bar distribution of the age in subset 1 in red, healthy control, and in asthma patients group, subset 2. It also gives us the uh, um, statistics itself on the age um, or in different groups, such as the average age in the healthy control group is 36 years old, with the standard deviation of 10.5 years old, uh, while the average age in the asthmatic group is 40 years old, and standard deviation is 13.19. We can visualize this with a comparison of age a plot, and we can see that the two groups are pretty similar and not significantly different in age. Here are the uh, statistics on the uh, uh, gender of the uh, study groups. So the healthy controls has 50% of females, 50% of males, while the asthmatic group, uh, group contains 75% of females, 25% of males. Uh, scrolling down, we'll see here that uh, we have eight uh, subjects in healthy group, and we have four non-severe asthmatic patients in the whole uh, subset two for asthma, and eight patients with severe asthma. And definitely we were looking for CD8 T cells there. Uh, so as you can see, we have total 20 subjects in the group of uh, CD8 T cells, and the same amount of samples will be in the CD40 cell group too. So these numbers in the parentheses near each category in the uh, study tree tell us the number of samples. We can drag any other information in, available for this study into this um, summary statistics. For example, if I drag in spirometry test category here as FEV1, we can see statistics on that too and uh, compare the uh, um, the values of this FE1 test on the plot. And you see that in the healthy controls has the definitely the um, uh, forced expiratory volume higher than the asthmatic patients. Here the statistics as well with standard deviations. So we can drag another one. And we can see here that the uh, comparison of the FVV uh, test is uh, significant, while comparing the FTC test, we see that the difference between healthy and asthmatics are not significant. So all the statistics information are right here in that window. So if we go to the grid view, another tab, we see all the specific information, detailed information of whatever we placed into the subsets in the comparison tab before. So whatever we saw in summary statistics, we can specify here, seeing which patient or which subject has which age, who was the healthy, who was severe asthma, who was non-severe asthma. So any information here can be exported into Excel with that tab below in the um, left uh, lower corner of the screen. So if you click export, you'll have this data uh, in outside Transmart on your computer and you can analyze it later and look closer to it. Um, we can also put there, uh, now there is a very important tab here called clear, if you can see it on the uh, um, right upper corner. If I click on the clear, then I clear everything 
that I, uh, I had before in the statistics. So all the summary statistics and subsets were wiped out, which is very convenient too. So now I drag the whole node into subset 1, and I will go to the grid view, and I will drag this node here again, and all the uh, study node information will be here as well, but um, this is the basics it gives you, but we can add here more if we want to have it on our computer. So we, we can leave. We did get a question. Sorry? We did have one question. Okay. Uh, how about a how about the situation where CD4 and CD8 might have different number of samples? They may have different number of samples, but in this case, they have the same number of samples as you can see. Right here, CD40 cells have 20 samples and CD8 cells have 20. And what is important here to mention is that this data set was curated that specific way that uh, the samples are separated, the categories are separated by the number of samples but not the uh, showing the real number of patients. If we look at the um, demographics here, we see the number 40. It's not that there are 40 really subjects there. There are 20 subjects there, but each of these subjects have the data expression for, the, for CD4 cells and for CD8 cells. And that's why it shows CD40. But in reality, they are 20. So when loading data into Transmart, uh, those who load them have to be very uh, creative, and they have to understand what they're doing then to be able to realize properly later. Did I answer your question? So I wanted to show here in this uh, grid view what, what we can use in our final file that we want to upload for our analysis. So I will remove, uh, you can remove here something that you don't need. For example, samples is an empty column. So I remove samples from here. Then we don't have information on race. I will remove it here too. Now we limited it to subjects, patients, uh, this uh, patient's ID, age and sex, and trial. Trial. We don't, we don't really need trial, but that's useful for your information. But I can remove it too. Now we see that our subset one goes to the whole study. And then I can add anything else I want to have there. In that file. The uh, clinical data results, the CD40 cells will see now. Um, we see here that uh, CD80 cells for this sample. Um, so this basically a mix match, but um, they're definitely CD40 cells for the same patients as CD80 cells as well. And you can always sort it out later and compare if you doubt what you have in the data set. So after the land then, now we're going to go to the advanced workflow and do some analysis and learn how, how do we run them. So I want to start with um, the simple limitation for the clinical data here. So um, I want to run the um, test using the whole the whole folder, the whole um, study folder is a subset one. We don't need to separate here anything. I'm going to analysis step and I'm choosing the scatter plot with linear regression. And here we're going to use the clinical data to compare. So for the independent variable, I will drag FPC because it was not significantly different with uh, in healthy controls and asthmatic patients. So I will consider independent. And then dependent will be FV, uh, V1, which doesn't matter actually. We can rearrange them. And then we just click run. It runs pretty quickly here, and now here is the scatter plot, which looks pretty nice. So, and uh, the statistics uh, on that linear regression is below. 
and you can see that the p-value is very high, so the difference uh, is significant and there is a good correlation be between the uh, spirometry test, uh, two spirometry test uh, data there, which makes sense probably if the uh, patients have um, higher forced expiratory volume, they may have the uh, higher the forced expiratory vital capacity as well. The next will be a heat map. And um, before we do that, I'm going to explain you how to create gene signatures. Because many tests, uh, in uh, many advanced workflow tests, um, deal with the uh, high dimensional data and um, it's useful to create uh, this, uh, the gene symbol list that we're going to use to run analysis. So if we go to gene signature lists, we can see here the uh, list of already created um, files with the different gene symbols in it. And uh, there are two of them that I created before. So. We're going, for our heat map, we're going to use the list of 18 genes that the authors of the paper on asthma uh, said were significantly were expressed in CD8 cells, but not in CD4 cells of the patients with severe asthma. And we want to visualize that to start with. Mm -hmm. So this is this list of 18 genes that uh, with your click on the folder of the gene signature, you can um, find what they are, and here you see that the gene symbols right there. You see here some um, several uh, pro-inflammatory proteins such as ketinase 3 and uh, arginine 1 and S100B. There pro-inflammatory proteins that we're going to explore later in the uh, rheumatoid arthritis hypothesis. Uh, you have to, usually you create this gene signature list based on the publication, or if you find the biomarkers yourself using Transmark, um, and then you put them in the text format and just um, save them in Transmark. I will show you how to do that. So to create the new signature in Transmart, you have to click new signature. And then you put the signature name right there. I type asthma, for example. Then you go uh, click on metadata, go on to the next page. You can put all the information you like here, but it's not mandatory, it's optional. The mandatory information is highlighted here with a red stars. We have to put species. Our species were Homo sapiens or human. You can put any of them. And we have to put the platform that was used for gene expression here. So we know that our platform is GPL 570, as we saw in the uh, study tree. After we place this information, we click next going to the next page, and here we have to put also the mandatory information. So I will put the, uh, uh, the p-value cutoff as um, 0.05. Uh, we're using gen symbol, or you can use the proset, uh, prop set symbol here, but we're using gen symbol, so I'm leaving it at, uh, as it is. And then we have to select metric indicator. Since we are using gen list, we have to click not used. Otherwise, um, if you use prop sets, you may choose uh, the actual code change or uh, whatever is available here. So now I choose the file from the list of files that I have on computer and you created there. Uh, for example, it's this file. Click open. And then this file is here. I just need to click save. And the file will be in the list of files on the Transmart. Do you have any questions uh, at this point? Uh, I don't see any right now. If anybody wants to raise their hand, I can unmute you too. No, I think I think we're good. Okay. Then we're going to use this gene signature list containing 18 uh, gene, gene symbols. Uh, for the heat map. 
And I drag the whole node with the asthma study into the subset one, go into advanced vector, choose the heat map. And here I have to drag the uh, high dimensional data, the node blood here. So we can run the heat map without any gene signature, it's just heating run. But uh, I wanted to do it specifically for 18 prote uh, proteins. So I have to click on the high dimensional data. And here in the lower box, I I'm selecting a gene signature list. So I have to start typing the name. And then as soon as it recognized the specific name, it shows up here. So I just need to choose one of my two files. And then I want to click here, aggregate probes, because sometimes in the platforms, one gene symbol has several probes. We want to use on the uh, heat map usually one, which makes it look better and more understandable. And then I apply selection. Now we can, um, we can also uh, calculate the score on the fly, which will separate a uh, different group of patients uh, calculating this, this, this score separately for different groups. So hit run. And um, the simple hit maps that do not contain a lot of genes will run pretty quickly as now. But if you run the whole uh, uh, pro, uh, probe list from the platform, it will run for a long time. So now we see this uh, heat map here. And the red box is. Uh, are the higher z-scores. Uh, the um, green boxes are the uh, z-scores that are below zero, which means uh, uh, actually here it means uh, the red is overexpressed genes and the green um, is um, down-regulated genes. So uh, as we can see from this heat map, that's what we wanted to uh, visualize and it uh, shows that what the office of the faith have wanted to uh, actually report it. We see that the uh, um, group of severe asthma patients has significantly overexpressed all of these uh, genes in CD8 T cells, but not really in CD4 T cells, as well as the control group and the group with non-severe asthma do not have any overexpression of these genes in CD4 cells. And um, CD8 cells have slightly overexpressed these genes, but not as significantly as the group of, CD8, uh, of severe asthma considering CD8 cells. So we visualize the data of the authors of the paper here. So now we're going to explore another advanced workflow analysis. This will be a box plot with ANOVA. We can also use here the high dimensional data as well as low dimensional. And for this analysis, I'm going to uh, use three genes, which are arginase, ketinase, and S100B proteins uh, that um, I already said are pro inflammatory proteins, and they were actually specified by the authors of the paper as significantly overexpressed in CD8 cells of the severe asthma patients. So we want to visualize that as well using Transmark. And uh, for subset here, for subset one, I'm going to use the severe asthma uh, patients group And I want to compare here the um, uh, CD4 and CD8 T cells. So I drag these T cells in the uh, um, independent variable box. And for the dependent variable, uh, sorry, see, it doesn't let me do anything before I drag the high dimensional data into the box. I'm going to choose the uh, um, list of three genes of the pro-inflammatory proteins and see if they're really overexpressed in CD8 
uh, cells uh, compared to CD4 cells of the severe asthma group. So we just click run. And the box below shows us, unfortunately, it shows the probes. Here we need to know which probes are uh, what protein, uh, what gene symbol. But we definitely see that um, CD8 T cells have higher over high, have higher expression uh, of these three genes compared to the uh, CD4 T cells in the group of severe patients, uh, severe asthma patients. And below the plot, you can see the novel results as, as statistics. You can always see the uh, how significantly the changes are and. Here, uh, the S100B protein uh, gene is significantly overexpressed, not this probe. But going down, we see this probe is significantly over, overexpressed, and so on. So you can always have this data on your computer by downloading it as a raw R data from Transmart. So when you created some plot and have some statistics, you click on download raw data and you'll save the picture of the plot and all the statistics on your computer for further analysis or looking up. So now we're going to move to the second study. I'm closing this one and proceed with the hypothesis. So Rheumatoid arthritis study has the same type of the uh, study three here, as you can see. And um, in the clinical data, is it has the DAS28 score of the patients, which is a clinical measure of rheumatoid arthritis activity. So the DAS score is received at the baseline, so before treatment, and in the arthritis patients, after 14 weeks of treatment uh, with the anti-TNF therapy. And we have three study groups here. The group with response to therapy, no response to therapy, and medium response to therapy. We don't have control here, unfortunately. So we want to explore more um, advanced workflow analysis here as well as we want to explore if any of the three pro-inflammatory proteins uh, involved in uh, the asthma are also somehow uh, elevated in rheumatoid arthritis cohorts because uh, literature shows that all the three proteins uh, can be upregulated in many inflammatory diseases, including rheumatoid arthritis. So I, I created this hypothesis to check it in Transmart, whether it works or not, but we can do it right now. So, but uh, let's start first, and I have to keep again what we had before. Let's start first with uh, uh, analyzing the clinical data again. So we'll start with a line graph, which we didn't do yet. So I use uh, the whole study for subset one, go to advanced workflow and choose the uh, line graph. So dragging the DAS score into the time management concepts because it's the time concept here, numerical data. And uh, the group concepts uh, will, I will choose the response to therapy. I can drag all the nodes here and it sub nodes immediately shows up. And then we just hit run. We want to compare the uh, rheumatoid arthritis before and after treatment and after treatment, visualizing response, non-response and medium response. And you can see from this line graph that at two date uh, time points, at baseline and uh, after 14 weeks of treatment, uh, we have significantly reduced uh, DAS score in the uh, group of responders. Medium responder group has 
higher density score, but it also reducing, that's why it's medium response. And the group of non-responders have the DAS score unchanged after treatment. That's how we visualized the uh, results and, and see how different the groups are. Now we're going to run the correlation analysis, another uh, advanced workflow. And here for subset one, I have to change the subset one. Again, do clear. And for subset one, I will use the group of non-responders. And um, go to correlation analysis. And I will put the DAS score into the correlation analysis and see if this score was different at the baseline or week 14. Or did it correlate in that group of patients before and after treatment? We hit run. And immediately see the result. So we see that there is a high correlation in the group of non-responders uh, for the DAS score before and after, after treatment, which makes sense because they didn't respond for treatment. And if they had the high score before the treatment, they still have the high score after treatment. And now we proceed to our final test, uh, where we're going to support the hypothesis that there should be some um, upregulation of uh, the uh, pro-inflammatory, one of the three or three pro-inflammatory proteins um, that were found for asthma patients also in the um, rheumatoid arthritis patients. So going again to comparison and cleaning up, we're going to put, um, okay, so I didn't need to do that because I'm going to use the non-response group again. And uh, I'm going to repeat the uh, uh, linear regression, but we're going to use uh, to run linear regression using the high dimensional data, which we didn't do before. We used the clinical data for linear regression. Here we're going to use the uh, uh, high dimensional data so uh, I'm going to put the baseline for the DAS score into the independent variable. And a dependent variable will be a biomarker data. And I have to choose the list of the three genes that I want to see if they correlate with the DAS score. Because the higher the DAS score, I suppose there should be a more uh, inflammation in those patients. So the list of three genes, apply selection, and I click run. So let's look at the plot below. And from the plot, we see that None of these three uh, gene, genes or the gene probes uh, had any slope on the scatter plot except the one. And this one is actually the aerogenase 1 protein, one of the three pro-inflammatory proteins, which um, is, um, we have to look at the statistics here. So this is it. And it has the high p-value which means uh, its change is significant, but the R squared is a bit low, it's 0 0.25, which means probably only, uh, it doesn't fit very well uh, into the whole concept, but it tells us that there is a significant uh, elevation of the arginine one protein expression in the patients who are non-responders uh, for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, but not all of them, but like 25% of them have, have this um, elevated, probably uh, connected to the elevation of the disc, uh, 
that's 28 score um, level of the protein expression. And that's what I wanted to show you today. And to summarize, we generated the hypothesis that was partially supported in a group of rheumatoid arthritis patients. And if we, in this case, probably if we would have the group of healthy controls, uh, we may have better idea about the um, pro-inflammatory proteins expression in the rheumatoid arthritis compared to healthy controls. Still, we, we proved some of our idea, and overall, we learned about Transmark and some of its features. So, um, now you can practice on your own, and uh, do you have any questions? There is um, there's one question. Okay. Um, so far, and I encourage you, if you have other questions, type them in or raise your hand. Um, but it, the question is, how about the situation to check the batch effect or bias before doing an advanced heat map? And then he says, or how to choose PCA or other tools to assess batch effect? The, the batch effect? Yes. Um, so, if, if I understand properly, it uh, definitely, firstly, Oh, when you run the heat map, you have to um, um, understand what what was loaded into Transmart as a high dimensional data, right? So um, if if you had uh, CD4 uh, cell, uh, T cells expression combined with CD8 T cell expression, and uh, the data is combined in one ex uh, high dimensional file then when the heat map will be calculated, the z-scores uh, could be calculated as average of these uh, expression levels of CD4 and CD8 T cells together, or as I showed you, you can use the uh, um, cal calculate on the fly, where you can calculate the scores separately. Um, but, but definitely, um, you have to First of all, know what what was the data that was loaded into the transmart. Um, I've un Sh Shen Gao, I've unmuted you. Do you have another another question there, or does that help? Uh, yes. If I talk, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's very interesting and a good introduction as well. One more question about um, I have uh, the different patients. Some patients have both CD4, CD8, but some patient has missing CD4 or CD8, yeah. some similar cell type. So it yeah. is can use the this transmark to analyze the difference between you know the same patient, same group patient, both have CD4, CD8, or sometimes it missing some sample CD4 yeah. or CD8. Yes. So your question is how how you know how do you know if how, how do you compare the same samples w within the um, high dimensional data uh, if something is missing, right? No, sorry, I'm speaking slowly. Uh, in, the, in the example, you saw the same uh, group pacing is 40, 40 pacing. CD4 has 20 samples, CD, CD8 has 20 samples. Yeah? Yes, yes, exactly. But for my and the current data I have, I have a different group of people, just like uh, 80 people. Some mm -hmm. uh, some people, maybe in the said 80, 60 patients have both a CD4 or right. CD8 cell type. But the other 20 possibly have only CD4. The other, some have only CD8. So this is more complex than the data you saw. So well, my question is, it can be still, can be analyzed this kind of data? Absolutely, you can analyze anything here. Um, <laughs> so the Transmart just takes what what is in there and compares whatever you give it to compare. So if there will be missing samples, they just wipe out uh, out of the comparison, right? Because it compares the on average. So. It, if you don't have some patients with CD4 cells, 
then it will show you, let's say, 10, and then it will compare 10 samples with, CD, with 20 samples uh, for the expression of CD8 cells. So it just shows whatever it has, just calculating. And um, again, if you want to know what is in there, you go to grid view, drag there the information, and then you can look through what you have which sample has which data. I'm not sure if I really answered your question. But you can you can compare anything that is in there. OK. OK. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. OK. Well, uh, thank you, Elena. Um, very good, good class. I hope it was uh, good for everyone. Um, we will have these the recording up on the website uh, later today. I already, the slides are already up there, and uh, we will um, and then we'll close out now. And uh, again, thank you all for attending. Uh, if you uh, enjoyed the class, if it was helpful, please refer it to your colleagues uh, for the future. And um, thank you, everyone. Thank you.